Hey, welcome back to the channel, everybody. This is Kevin. We're still here at Cisco Live 2020 in Las Vegas. And when I thought about coming to Cisco Live, this guy's face just popped in my mind almost instantly. It's great to have an interview with him. It's David Penaloza. He's got a ton of Cisco certifications. He's currently studying for CCDE. We'll be talking about that. But beyond all that, David, you seem to enjoy Cisco Live more than anybody I've ever met. So uh, thanks for joining us. <laughs> thanks for the opportunity. Well, I think Cisco Live is, well, people believe it's only about marketing and technology, but I would say that's half of it. Mm -hmm. I think that the other half of Cisco Live is the people. He's beating others, especially now that we have been from, from two to three years isolated. Now it's just, oh, finally somebody else. And I have a bunch of people that I only meet here every year at Cisco Live because right. they live here in the US or even some other colleagues that live in Europe and only come to one Cisco Live so it's difficult to well, to catch up with them. and here I'm just meeting everybody and then the first thing you ask so you want a hug or not they say yes <laughs> seems like people longing for it just give me a hug <laughs> and then for instance Jason Gooley yes I haven't met him since January or February on 2020 which is which was the last Cisco Live in Europe the, the in-person one and I have met him maybe a dozen times walking around and every time. So you want another help? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> it's just, well, the, the human warmth is very sure. important. It's networking, but human networking. That's, right. That's the stuff that. Oh, I like that. Human networking. That's a good. I love it. <laughs> that, 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 that's a good catchphrase. I love that. Uh, one of the things we're kind of focusing on in this interview series mm -hmm. is what would you recommend to somebody coming for the first time? Because right now, a lot we've got a lot of first timers it's not been live and since well the last time i went was uh 2019 2019 and um so what advice would you give for somebody coming for the very first time how do they make the most of it well the first thing i would recommend is don't schedule every session that you would find don't do it mm -hmm. because first if you have the time to join all the sessions you will not have the time to meet people mm -hmm. and if you do it the other way around then you're going to miss some of the sessions that are pretty cool Unless there is a session that can't be recorded as in a mm. tutorial and this type of stuff, then okay, join. But right. if it's something that you can watch later, then well, you have to wait it. Do you really want to join the session at that point? Or do you want to meet with other people? Or do you have a particular question to the presenter, which is going to be important mm -hmm. because there might be somebody who is a well, it's an SME and you don't want to miss a chance. But, but otherwise, if you're just going to sit on the session, then well, you can decide if you want to watch the recording or if you want to meet other people. Like, mm -hmm. I don't know, Keith, who is outside. And if I would have to pick between Keith or you and joining any other session, I wouldn't think it twice. It's like, okay, well, I will watch the recording. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. So it's about balancing it. Don't let all the information overwhelm you because right now is, I would say that it gets to a point where you get overwhelmed and you don't know what to pick. Mm -hmm. you just. Pick your topics specifically, so, so pick them carefully, my apologies. And then, well, use your good judgment to decide if it's worth joining or not. I wouldn't miss a tutorial though. But everything else, definitely up to you. Just take it calm, don't, don't go either way completely. That's, right. a, but that's a great point because a lot of people might not know that if they miss a breakout session, most of those are gonna be recorded and they're gonna be able to watch those in the future. Well. I, if I'm, if I read your bio correctly, is it true that you actually helped develop some of the Cisco exams? You were on a committee that oversaw some of that. Yeah, I do. I write for several exams. Mm -hmm. Actually, I cannot tell you which ones because of NDA. But sure. I helped. I understand. <laughs> but I help write exams, and uh, and well, the thing is that if you are the type of people who goes and takes exams and only says, mm -hmm. "Oh, I don't like it," or "This is a horrible question," or whatever, well, then why not contribute to improve the quality of it? Right. If you already passed the exam, then well, you could simply try to reach out to the people who are, uh, because right now in social media, you get plenty of this information about, we're looking for somebody to help us be in an SME to write some mm -hmm. questions and stuff. Even learning at Cisco puts it a lot on Twitter. Right. So if you want to contribute in a way, instead of just, eh, I didn't like it. And mm -hmm. that's, well, that's the way I think that. And then I simply wanted to help a little more. And well, they just told me, okay, let's try out this number of questions and we'll see. And it's been, three years since then, yeah. <laughs> three and a half or something. It's wonderful. And I would say that the process is, is really tough, right? It goes sure. through plenty of reviews. The yes. goal is to make it the best possible. Mm -hmm. and, and I enjoy that while well, once people are taking the exam, I got several colleagues and friend who, friends sorry, who told me, 
I took the exam and I didn't find it bad. I think it was fair. And then you, ah, okay, maybe I had something to do with that. But, <laughs> oh, because it's not the same, right? When people say, oh, the questions were horrible or something wasn't understandable or because it's common. But when you get people who say, oh, it's just because I didn't study this, but I like the exam. Oh God, it's a completely different feeling. And you feel like you're really helping because also it's about testing people on the right things that are important. Yeah, not just memorization of yeah, something. Yeah, you don't want people to simply remember which are the timers for OSPF and it's point to point when it's broadcast type, mm -hmm. oh, come on. It's just about how do they communicate? What's the role of the DR? What's mm -hmm. the role of the VDR? These mm -hmm. things are important from an analytical point of view. You need to know what happens. Because many other things, you can just Google them up. Mm -hmm. But understanding the technology, that's important stuff. That's what we should be testing people on. Oh, and one of the questions I get about the, the testing is, is this exam hard? Well, that's all relative. I, a lot of times <laughs> I'll try to give somebody a comparison. Well, this might be easier than the Encore exam, but it's more difficult than CCNA, for example. So uh, with all the certifications that you've gone through, those that are currently active, mm -hmm. Would you mind rating just some? What would you consider? I know there are no easy exams, but what would you cons <laughs> what would you consider an easier exam compared to a harder exam well, in the NA or NP tracks? I would say that all of them have their their tricks because if you if you try to take a core exam, mm -hmm. it's not going to go deeper into sorry deep into any topic. It's right. going to scratch the surface around all the topics, so it's going to be extremely wide. Okay, and also you would have one hundred and two or one hundred and four questions. In the same amount of time, you have mm -hmm. 60 for another exam. Mm -hmm. So then the, the, the problem here is going to be the, simply the plethora of questions you would get and not necessarily the depth of them. Some people right. simply get tired of reading after an hour, an hour and a half, and they say, oh, God, is this going to end at some point? <laughs> and when you check, uh, take in a specialization, then you get 60 questions, 61, 62. Mm -hmm. And it's not a very long exam compared to the other, but the depth can can be nuts in some occasions. I just took one for data center and in some things I did very well, but in some other topics I got completely roasted. And mm -hmm. I, but I just went home, but I'm going home right now thinking about, okay, well now I have to learn more storage. <laughs> so uh, co compare, uh, if somebody's going to go down an NP track, let's say they're going to get Encore as their core exam, they're going to do a NARSI as their, as their um, little elective. Yes. Are you saying that because it's more shallow but wider. Are you saying a core exam is harder or easier? Make sure I understood you right. It could be it could be harder from a from an endurance perspective. Mm -hmm. I know some engineers who just skim quickly through the questions and right. then after a while they get tired easily. And I know another engineers who spend plenty of time in each one of the questions and then boom, I have nothing left. Mm -hmm. So it would depend on your endurance. I would recommend people to well try to try to read things or try to exercise this fast reading but without skipping that many details if you're going to take an anchor exam because it's it's quite a lot of stuff mm -hmm. i have met many engineers who just told me i took the exam i couldn't even finish right. and, and it was too much or it was extremely long or and i do believe it's the same for the ccna exam because now it's a it's a massive mm -hmm. exam so you get 100 questions so you yeah. need to be ready for well dedicating plenty of time reading not not just trying to skip things and, and then, oh, it must be A, B, C, D, or all of the above, click next. No, just <laughs> take your time, but at the same time, just don't sit too much into it. It's a, it's a game of balance, but I would say that the endurance is the main problem. Hey, let me interrupt your training video really quickly to let you know how you can get Module 1 in its entirety of any of these courses you see on screen for free. Just visit the link, sign up, and you can taste test any of these courses or really all of these courses. All right, back to the video. You mentioned reading. That reminds me, uh, you mentioned that you're going after your CCDE right now, the design expert. Yes. And I've looked into that just a little bit. I've taken like the, one of the practice exams I had here at uh, Cisco Live one year. That seems like a lot of reading. What's it like uh, for anybody that might be considering that? What's it like to study for CCD? It seems like unlike anything else. It's a completely different exam, and that's actually why I like it. Because it's not about putting commands here, it's not trying to configure this other device, it's not trying to just sit on the CLI. It's a little bit more. I'm not saying that that's particularly bad, it's just my sure, preference. Sure. Because I know engineers will like just to configure stuff, make it work, the pain succeeds, I'm happy I'm going home. But there's some others like me that, I, again, I like to make things work, but I also like to know why things are working, sure. which is where CCD jumps in, because it's all about why. Why is it this working? Why is it not working? Or why would you select a 
instead of B, for mm -hmm. instance. There will be some requirements, and yes, it's about reading a massive amount of text. Mm -hmm. I remember in some of the previous occasions that I took the exam, because I haven't passed it yet, but I tend to call it my most successful failure story. <laughs> <laughs> and it was about seven documents, so I could answer maybe three questions. Yeah. It just comes and piles up. Mm -hmm. So you have to get used to consuming a good amount of information. That's the first thing. And also, you need to have your mind a little on the business side to understand not just the technical side of the, the, the story. It's just about, okay, so what does it mean for you as a business return of investment? Mm -hmm. What does it mean to you the total cost of ownership? Why does it mean to you a capital expenditure uh, uh, or an operational expenditure? These type of things that are important for the business and most of the engineers honestly don't care. If mm -hmm. you want to make things work, you don't care if there are some other requirements or not. As long as I get from A to B and I get some guidelines, then I'm done. I'm going to make it work. Yeah. But there is a lot of business talking. And if you want to just not do the technical side of the story, but also talk to some other people, maybe from the C-level of the company or even to product managers, to people who are not necessarily technical or at least not to the level that an engineer would be, mm -hmm. then you will be this bridge, you know, following Cisco's, uh, yeah, what's the slogan? This be the bridge. And you will be talking to the business people, mm -hmm. to the technical people and consolidating their views. Why can't we do, or, or why can, or can't we do this from a technical standpoint? Mm -hmm. Or why we can't, but we should not because of the business. Yeah. So it, it, honestly, I like it. It's because you are, you're interacting with people and you are agreeing on, on what we should or what we should not do. It, mm -hmm. It's pretty cool. It's, it's, it's not just about configuring things or understanding how technology works, but adding a little bit of other things on top. Uh, you're, you're reminding me of something when you were saying that. I remember after passing uh, my first CCA, I said, I would not have passed if I had not had a typing class because there was just so much to type. You had to be able to type really, really quickly. It sounds like for the CCD, it might even be helpful to go take a speed reading class. Would exactly. that help? Exactly. It's about reading. You're not going to configure anything. Yeah. It's about you're going to get a ton of documents. There will be some parts of the of the exam or the engine in which you will have to maybe drag and drop some things or... I have been in situations in which I had to draw a core. So they give you a bunch of routers and they tell you, okay, just mm -hmm. draw me a completely independent set of two cores for routing. And then right. you just put lines around the routers and things like that. Mm -hmm. But there will be no configuration from your side. It's going to be reading, dragging things, clicking here and there. It's way higher level than any other certification like that. One other thing I wanted to get into, obviously, if our uh, viewers haven't noticed, you're wearing a cape. And, uh, and I've seen you wear oh, a cape for yes. a while now. It's kind it's, of a thing. Uh, and I know you're a Cisco VIP. You're very active on all the, all the boards out there, on all the communities. And I, you, one of the things I respect most about you is you really give back a lot. I mean, you, you, uh, you contribute to so many people. I've heard how you help out people in the uh, Cisco Networking Academy. Uh, I really want to uh, give you props for that. That's super awesome. But I'd like to, I'd like to know... For people that don't know, how do you how do you seem to come in possession of this cape? What does it mean to be a, <laughs> uh, a, a Cisco VIP? And what sort of communities should people know about that they might want to get involved in? Wow, that's a lot of stuff. Okay, that's a lot so of stuff. for the cape, let's just cover the cape, which is the, uh, actually the short, the shortest one. Uh, uh, there is a social media uh, competition every day on Cisco mm -hmm. Live. Actually, every uh, day, but it's only three of them. So it's Monday, no, Sunday till Wednesday, so it's four. Mm -hmm. Well, there should be three capes, sorry. My math is not working right now. <laughs> so you every day, they're going to award somebody who is providing the best content, and they would have some topics. So they would say the best pre-event uh, or pre-show content is for Sundays, which was yesterday. Mm -hmm. Then they're going to say the best... Uh, uh, keynote uh, outputs uh, or the keynote uh, of all ideas or, or or maybe even reflections, they would try to align it with a particular topic every day. Mm -hmm. In my case, uh, I want, not this one actually, another one. This is the one I, the one I got yesterday. Oh, cool. So uh, four years ago, was it? In 2018, then I won the cape because uh, I was providing the keynote insights. Mm -hmm. And I was, during the whole keynote, you know, just, just trying to write things or, or write catchy phrases. And they would take a look at each one of those tweets. So it's a, I would say it's a little, well, it's a fair competition. But also, if you have people 
like Nicole who is from Cisco or you have some other people that are outside of Cisco like uh, is Zoe Rose she's a Cisco champion who people who really tweet a lot mm -hmm. and they, they like to communicate a lot then it's gonna be a tough thing to pull off right. honestly <laughs> we had a couple of intense days in which it felt almost like it was a nine to five job you had to <laughs> be all the time providing stuff mm -hmm. but it's fun because uh, in my case at least what I did yesterday it wasn't all about uh, trying to put content as in pre-show I honestly was just sharing the pictures of the people I was meeting yeah. I met with maybe a dozen of people in about two hours I was just walking here and somebody came by hey what's up and then <gasps> dude and then I was just <laughs> coming and hugging people that's for the cape though now uh, the VIP the, for the VIPs. Okay, what happens with the VIPs? The VIPs are a recognized group of collaborators that Cisco Learning Network and Cisco Community select every year. Mm -hmm. These are people whom, uh, out of their own free time, they try to help and help others in the forums. Try to create content. People who who actually put, well, they sacrifice a little of their time and space to just help somebody else to right. get on track or passing the ball as we also say mm -hmm. you would need to fill up some requirements as in this particular number of points or or well you need to be a constant uh, contributor but at the end of the day this is just about being recognized for helping other people mm -hmm. so if you feel like giving back which is honestly what I felt because anyway the the had actually is a is it's the it was born in a discussion we had over Twitter about community that mm -hmm. we are all a community because anyway if you create content and you share it you're not the only one who's getting benefited many other people might have had your same problem and then it's in your blog is right. in your I don't know your video your channel anywhere it is and then you would have helped other people who maybe don't have to open the tech case maybe mm -hmm. don't have to go through the horrible exercise of trying to find out what happens and some things might not be documented some things might not It'd be uh, just behaving as they're supposed to be because it could be a bug. But if somebody else went through it and can share you a little bit of that experience, mm -hmm. it's totally worth it. And giving back to your community is what it means because if we all share all these things we went through, then we'll save us quite a lot of time. I've been in situations in which I knew zero about what was the problem. And then I just uh, ask another friend of mine and he just jump into a WebEx call and in maybe 30 minutes we had it solved. Mm -hmm. And I I didn't have to, you know, go through, I don't know, a complete week just trying to debug things and this type of stuff. Mm -hmm. So I think it's also karma. Everything you give sure. will come back to you. And and the community is also, at least in Twitter, it's a, I would say it's warm and fussy. They are fabulous, really. The, the people are excellent. Yeah. The same way that, that you interact in Twitter, there are many others that they love to do it and you just simply well i would say you just simply match with them or just uh, uh are in the same wavelength there are a ton of people i have met here whom i only met through twitter hmm. and then suddenly here in person are you david it's like <laughs> yes that's me and then you just go do you want to hug yes <laughs> <laughs> but it's about it's about community it's about trying to help others and and simply trying to share what you have and in my case, I love teaching as well because I was in a Cisco Academy in mm -hmm. Venezuela. Mm -hmm. I first took the CCNA course and then I got the chance or I had the chance of becoming an instructor and I just continue doing it. So I was, well, in a Cisco Academy, I was taught. I also taught myself mm -hmm. and I, I love doing it. So I kept simply doing it in some other ways, creating contents or videos or trying to explain people through blogs. In our company, I work for Verizon. I also create content internally maybe okay. some knowledge bases or maybe some training so it, it's all about trying to share the things you know and by sharing and trying to polish the topics then you're also winning because well you have to be accurate so yeah. and you go through details about how this works uh, another thing that or for the people who want to actually create content don't make it perfect just make it happen mm -hmm. because if you want Great. to polish this blog post until it's perfect you will never release it because you will never be completely mm -hmm. satisfied you yes. will, I will say oh i could have written this better or i could just have put another output no just let it out over time you'll get 
to be a better writer. Mm -hmm. And anyway, with even a little piece of information you're sharing, somebody else is going to get benefited. Mm -hmm. So it's just all coming back. It's just a, this huge synergy that sometimes we don't see, but it's there. Yeah, Th uh, that is some great advice. I cannot thank you enough for taking some time to join us today. I've got a lot of inspiration myself. I'm sure of yours, Will. David? I love to be here. It's thank a pleasure. <laughs> Thanks so much. Thanks everyone for joining us. We'll see you next time.